appreciate. I'm sure you understand just what I mean. Everybody everywhere is calling for her now. I'm speaking of the new Ford, and boy, it's sure a wow. Lay off people, lay off folks, none of your sarcastic jokes. Henry's made a lady out of Lizzie. Not a rattle, not a bit. Lizzie now has lots of it. Henry's made a lady out of Lizzie. There's everything inside her now except a kitchen sink, a mirror, and a powder puff, a shower bed. Uh, next, I would like to introduce Steve Lang from Lang's Old Car Parts. Uh, very grateful to have him here. Uh, he's going to share quite a bit. Here you go. Uh, uh, Steve Lang, uh, I see a bunch of customers out here and some vendors and new faces, but I'd like to introduce ourselves, show some photos of the shop, and, and kind of talk about some about how we're seeing the hobby progressing too over the years. But uh, I'm second generation in the business, uh, third generation in the hobby. Uh, a lot of people have probably met my father over the years at Chickasha or International Tours. But we got a really nice old factory building that we kind of set up in the last few years, uh, 20,000 square foot. And we got, we're just kind of packed to the brim right now with with all sorts of tea stuff. Uh, we offer about 3,500 different items on our website. Um, we do try to shy away from stuff that you can just go down to Napa and get. So we're, we're mainly focusing on the harder to find stuff. Um, we do try to keep kind of a library now. So we if you're up in the area, we got vintage Fords going back, uh, tea times, a lot of different reference materials. Um, trying to trying to make that accessible too for people that want to look stuff up. Uh, we got some early Ford service bulletins from 1910, 1911 too. But, um, Always got some stuff up front for for sale and display, and then we do a lot of work too that we don't really advertise a whole lot. So a lot of people like to come in, check their coils. Um, we do all our magnet recharging in house. Uh, nice generator test stands. Um, we got a setup we got from Ron Patterson for checking torque on starters. Um, we got quite a bit of Kara Wilson tooling too. So try to help people out with that kind of stuff. Um, and not so much rebabbiting that kind of stuff, but um, a lot of the rear end tools uh, reaming out drive shaft bushings, pullers, that kind of stuff. Um, we don't let it leave the shop, but if you want to come up and use it, unfortunately, a lot of you guys are kind of far away from us. Um, and we collect a lot, and then usually, if we get excess tooling too, my dad's been throwing it up on the form, trying to get that stuff back out. Um, we're also trying to set up kind of a museum too. So we got a really nice uh, period run-in stand for doing motor work. Want to get that set up and do a nice display for people. Uh, we can do pan straightening, um, got a nice little welding, welding area, some machining. Uh, we do a lot of sandblasting. So it, if you buy used parts from us, we really try to clean it up, make sure everything's inspected for cracks. Because it, unfortunately, a lot of that shipping is just a killer. So I don't want to ship out a bad item. Um, also trying to set up 
part of the hobby that I really enjoy and I want to get into is machining. So I've uh, got a nice setup for decking heads that we got to set up, um, line boring for a tope and arp, um, narrow yeah, and nice gear lathe, um, do valve guides and valve seats, done a couple of blocks for those for people. Um, a nice quick way set up for doing main bearings, a little bit overkill for Model T work, but um, also playing around with doing plating in-house. So the, this is a setup for heating up uh, and stirring up for copper plating and kind of playing around with that kind of stuff. Uh, we do got into doing a lot of coil points and just small batch stuff and doesn't really pay off sending that off to a plater for 20 little coil point items. Um, my dad doesn't do so much with regular parts anymore. So it, he comes in three days a week and buys and sells cars and used parts and, and used tooling. Um, and just kind of a pile of different engines and cars that we've got over the years. Um, some of them we're keeping, some of them are for sale. But um, we got tons and tons of stuff right now though. Um, the depot hack's a real nice keeper we have though. It's a, a nice uh, Martin and Perry original body from 26. And got about 1,500 miles on that in the last few years. Um, and my dad will also get into non-T stuff too for buying and selling. So 51 MG, uh, 24, 25 Cadillac. Um, a really nice 25 Flint that the interior top and body paint is all original. Um, and then a 29 LaSalle after, after that. Um, we have also bought out a couple engine rebuilders too, just recently that passed away. Um, Ed Stein and Mike Worcester, a uh, couple guys up in New England area. So we, we got a lot of extra reamers, that kind of stuff that we're slowly putting up. Uh, a lot of Model A line boring stuff. Um, yeah, the Kara Wilson transmission jig. And uh, this stuff's all excess. So we, we got some already that we're keeping. Um, of course, one of the guys, Ed Stein, had a business model of, as he was rebuilding engines, if tooling came up for cheap. He just bought it to keep it competitors showing up. And we got probably about 10 or so boring bars, and no one uses those really much anymore. Um, and then a couple of different, I think we probably have like five or six hand crank coil testers right now. Yeah, the one earlier is the, the one we use all the time. Um, then we just got a bunch of used parts. Um, yeah, just engine blocks, doors, yeah, complete motors, radiators that most of them were taken off of the car for a reason, unfortunately. Uh, axles, hogsheads, um, good 50 or 60 water pumps, fans. Um, tons of wheel stuff. Un unfortunately, a decent amount of the wheel stuff has sharp edges, bad wood, but uh, there's still some stuff we can take off of it. Um, lugs for 21 inch rims or 30 by three and a half inch demountable rims. Keep a lot of those around if someone's missing them. Um, just gas tanks, mainly with problems. Generators, mag coils, whole section of hard 
uh, Hassler shock parts, brake drums, more pans and hogsheads. Um, this whole area too is just a section of the building that we filled up since 2013. So that uh, back at our old shop, we still have six 18 wheeler trailers just full of stuff. But most of it's 20s era. The, the good brass stuff usually doesn't stick around too long. Um, yeah, just more coil, coil boxes. Um, we do get some early stuff in, like a, a 10 rear end. Um, and just drive shafts, axle housings, steering columns. Um, then we also have some NOS parts too. So we luckily enough to to get a decent amount of collections. So we I, I know a lot of these uh, passenger side differential cases are NOS. Um, we got a nice block and a original shipping freight. Um, the radius rods and the, the axle shafts, brand new. And we got a couple of transmission drums still in Cosmoline. Um, of course, the, the replacement style with the lugs. Uh, tons of 25 coupe fenders. I don't know, Ford must have had a ton of extra and just forced them on suppliers. But and then a few front fenders we just picked up. And then other stuff we've been working on, trying to get some more items. Um, this is one of the last things I was doing just before I left, is working on Holly G and L4 choke plates and throttle plates, getting those cut up. Um, also working on some LED headlights that have a nice high beam, low beam pattern. So that they work six volt or 12 volt, uh, same light bulb. And the, they look to be pretty promising. Uh, they, they're pre-focused, so you don't have to worry about getting the reflector to work with them correctly. Um, some of the stuff we've done over the years too are stuff that other people have actually designed and retired or passed away and we took over. So like Tony Wilkshire was doing this timing toolkit. Um, he gave us the ability to do it or, or sold it to us before he passed away. Um, coil point stuff. So that this is, I think for a Model K, uh, early Heinz and late Heinz coil points. So at RV Anderson passed away pretty recently and and we've been working with, with his widow and getting all the information and luckily all all his past suppliers uh, working with those and we're we get all the parts individually and assemble them in house now. Um, a lot of the other stuff like these we're working with a local screw machine shop. Uh, all mechanical um, screw machines just doing different plugs or the oddball threads for the uh, back of the drive shaft hardware. Um, we're also making up the brake rod arms, uh, having those cast up, but doing them at a 4140 steel. And, uh, the Avco caps, doing the, uh, oh, hub bolts for both 3 8 and 5 16 for the T. Oh, the lock screw for the 21 inch split rim. Uh, gas tank overflow pipes. Um, head gaskets have been kind of interesting in the last few years. So it, the original supplier tooling went bad. Uh, supposedly they have it fixed now and they're going to ship us some. But we did find a secondary company too that made us up a thousand over the last summer, and we're just about out of those thousand. But then uh, the original supplier should be getting us another thousand of those as well. Um, 
manifold hardware. Um, got nice stainless ones with the dome to it that were selling to all the other vendors and uh, the 25 ones with the, the ridge on the bottom. Uh, oil cap for the breather tube. Uh, dog leg manifold they're doing up and so on. And then all these items are stuff that will wholesale to the other vendors too. Um, did these up recently for uh, 10 thou, 15 thou, and 20 thou magneto shims. Um, gentlemen in California have been making up these hubs for us for a while for uh, Turbo 400, but he used a lot is all the 52 teeth for them. Uh, triple gear pins. So we're, we had some problems with one of the suppliers sending soft pins. So we worked with a company and had these made out of uh, S7 tool steel and heat treated to about 50 to 55 Rockwell, right around there. And uh, we got them in either standard sizes or two thou over where they press in the flywheel. Um, some people like to, two different schools of thought. Um, some people like the two thou over in the flywheel because once you press something in and pull it back out, the hole might not be the same as when Ford originally machined it. Um, oil screens, uh, we do about three to four hundred of those a year and sell them to all the other vendors. Um, little tools so you don't drop the, the nun in the transmission um, so that the nun in the washer can slip on there and, and kind of fit it on the, the pedal shafts when you're putting your bands in. Uh, Pitman arm, where we're getting um, Oh, Leon Calvert was doing that for years, and it, he wanted to retire, so we, he gave us his foundry and everything, and those are, those are also made out of a 4,000 series steel. Uh, ratchets for the hand crank, uh, radiator support rods. Uh, Frank Fenn was doing this for quite a while, the radiator apron, and he sold it to us, uh, the local screw machine shops doing uh, fender brackets that thread into the back for the touring cars. Um, Bendix hardware. Uh, for a lot of years, the head of the bolts were too tall. So we, we had these custom made locally uh, with the correct thickness heads. Uh, battery cables. Um, so we got two gauge and one aught. And the, the one aught really makes a good difference if you're doing six volt. Um, original style battery strap for the ground. Um, Ron Patterson was doing these for a while and then he retired, but it, a little kit for replacing the starter terminal. Um, so a lot of the times the stud will twist and rip out of the, the bus bar inside the starter for the field. So we're, we're silver soldering those in house. Um, then also with Patterson, uh, we're rebuilding the, the generator brushes in house too. Cause it, uh, Patterson retired a few years ago and, uh, being another gentleman here went down there for, for two to three days. He showed us everything and we just got all his generator tooling. Um, uh, generator oilers that have an actual spring loaded cap to them. Uh, Holly G. Venturi's. Uh, RV Anderson were do was doing these uh, leather straps with the cotter pin for the tops and we're going to continue that on. Um, and also uh, he did a lot of same RV Anderson with the top straps. Um, on the way down here, I stopped at RV's widow's house and and picked up some more tooling for getting all these rivets in this in the straps that we didn't know about first time we went. And uh, RV 
pulled all the drawings on those. And luckily we were able to get the drawings from RV and continue those on. Um, a key for the trunk, uh, my dad made 10,000 of those. They were cheap, but they'll probably go outlive me. Uh, my aunt does tool bags and rolls, and uh, Mark Cameron did a lot of research on the original patterns and, and worked with my aunt on how those work. Um, Steve Kniff out in Colorado was doing these carburetor filters and, and wanted to slow up, so we, uh, we're working with Steve now and doing those in-house and selling those. Um, service manuals, so a, a nice company started making the bigger service manuals, uh, better quality photos, you can read it easier. Uh, we got some in the, the raffle. Um, got some of the early waternecks that actually have the, the bump in them for the earlier cars. Um, not many of those needed, but if you're doing a correct early car, uh, those we don't list though. I think we only got like 10 or so. Uh, we're bending brass channel for windshields in house. So we can do a couple of different widths and different radiuses. So some of the early brass windshields actually have different radiuses in the corners. So you can let us know what you need. Uh, spokes, uh, for a lot of years, a chair company, one town over is been doing up those spokes for us. Uh, we got six different sizes right now uh, for just the mountable wheels. Uh, we don't get into the Woodfellow stuff at all. But um, luckily, we can get the spokes made and trial fit them into rims, and then and then have the rest of the the batch run at a time. Uh, Frank Fenn and before that, Paul Larson was doing manifold cookers. Um, some of the other stuff we'll do too. Uh, I'll do transmission rebuilding on the weekends. Get them balanced out. Get everything lined up on the magneto fields. Um, also doing some laser cutting for different people too, or different projects. If you need some help, so it. One of the guys needed a Pierce Arrow set up and had this, kind of hard to tell, but out of a flat sheet of brass. And kind of the stuff we're working on. Um, it's been a fun, definitely a fun hobby to be into. I got three cars that run enough to build a few more. Uh, we average about 100 packages a day and shipping all over the world. Um, couple in Asia, not as many, but mainly uh, U.S., Canada, Europe is a ton, South Africa, a lot of the British colonies, Australia, New Zealand. But the hobbies, luckily, staying strong. Uh, COVID didn't slow down really anything except getting some parts in it. The, a lot of people were stuck at home working on cars, um, but unfortunately the supply chain, just like everything else, did slow stuff down like the head gaskets. Um, prices up. Yeah, prices up. Uh, brass works with the radiators. Uh, they're copper and brass. One of them tripled in price, the other one doubled in price. So radiators went up a bunch. Um, yeah, sheet metal. Uh, Rootlieb had a tough time for a while getting the correct thickness sheet metal in for running boards. It, it was made and everything, but stuck out on a ship in the California Harbor for a while. Uh, everything's back to normal with them, so they're getting those out nice and quick. Uh, radiators are about a six month wait right now because it, there was another company, Berg, making them for a while, but uh, Berg retired. Um, but luckily, 
we're getting new customers pretty much daily. Uh, there's a lot of people buying 80% or 100% done cars and getting them going. And it, it seems like if the car is priced recently, they, or reasonably priced cars are selling. Uh, some major project cars are getting a little bit harder. Um, I think because there's so much available out there right now, there's not that many people want to get into a basket case 20s touring car as much. Yeah. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Um, before I came down, the TW timer replacement brush might actually show back up, but I think the complete timer, it probably won't, unfortunately. Um, yeah, I talked a little bit with with Tony's widow, and it, it even back when that was going, t Tony did all the machining for those in house, and it he wasn't really making that much on them, unfortunately. Um, Bendixes, we got a lot of the individual pieces. Um, we're buying those from another model T parts house, but when I talked to them, their original supplier went under and they're having trouble finding someone that actually has the time to make them right now. But the, they're still looking around for someone to make the, the main shaft is the issue. Tomorrow I'm actually heading down and picking up a lot of the tooling from the gentleman that was making in Arkansas. Um, I'm not sure if they have everything because the, the widow knows some of the stuff they have but we might have to make some molds done up for the bungs, stuff like that. So hopefully we can get those going again. But there is a gentleman doing some round and oval already up in Ohio. Um, yeah, if you call up, I can give you his info. But then hopefully with this other tooling, we'll be able to start making them again too. Along those lines, 26, 27 gas tanks. Will you be producing those anytime in the future? That one's going to be kind of hard unfortunately. Um, in case I did pull some drawings on those from Ford and they're, they're kind of complex so it it's on a wish list right now but we'll, we'll have to get caught up on the stuff we're doing now first. So possibly in the future. Those were kind of tough. I talked to um, is it Tom Rootlieb about those and the problem he was finding is the the price for stamping those out would just make a really high highly priced vendor because the the front ones are stamped, but he figured he could sell a lot more of those because they fit a lot more bodies per fender, where the the rears are kind of broken down to too many different body styles. Oh, any other questions? So will anyone ever start remanufacturing the original style rear, rear axle Hyatt bearings with the grooves in them? A lot of people have looked into it. Um, usually the biggest outcomes for those is unfortunately uh, price. Because it, I think one gentleman that looked into it wasn't sure if he could get it done for less than 200 bucks each. And it, the, to get that done too, he had to make some like a thousand of them, and he he didn't quite have the capital or to go ahead go with it. Um, yeah, so nothing at the moment, unfortunately. Use uh, used parts? Do they come from any particular source predominantly, or just a variety of sources, like swap meets or come and buy Grandpa's barn full of old stuff, or what? A little bit of everything, really. Um, and it, I, I think my dad has about 20 or 25 different people that are trying to get him to come out and look at, look at their parts right now. And um, so the, there are quite a bit of people with just a pile of tea parts that want to get rid of it. But then we'll, we'll do Hershey and, and Chickasha for a lot of years. Find a lot, a lot of good stuff there. Um, we are really desperate for cores, too. Uh, I think on coils, uh, we sold, I think, about 
400 coils that we did not get a core back for in the last year. So we've been really trying to hunt those down for people that. Have you seen any trends in parts, especially ones that just are off the wall? Like, why did we just suddenly sell 25 of these in the past week? We do see that a lot. Um, there is a, definitely a connection between the form and what people buy afterwards, too. So that, that, that can definitely happen. Well, definitely appreciate the time. And yeah, the, our, our goal is definitely to continue this going. So it, um, there's seven of us that just deal with getting the orders out. Uh, uh, my wife does all the accounting. My sister-in-law orders all the parts to come back in. Um, and there's like five of us that answer the phones out of the seven. And then the two others just deal with just picking parts on off the shelf and boxing them up. We're, we're about 10. So it's seven of us with the new stuff. And then my dad's got uh, him and two others that deal with the cars and the used parts. And about, about 100 packages a day, right around there. So sometimes this is our slow time of the year. We're down to like 40 or 50. Uh, I think our record is about 200 in the summer. I got a feeling from what I heard on the forum is I don't know if they, they actually leave that much room to be able to wholesale, unfortunately. Um, a lot of our current tire suppliers actually don't give that much of a discount for their wholesale vendors, but us and Snyder's and everyone else just have tires shipped direct from the supplier to the customer. So we, we don't we don't really have that much into them either to sell them because we don't even touch them. I imagine it is, unfortunately. Um, I, I think with different laws and stuff like that, they can't make them the same as they used to. It is kind of what I get from the gist of things, but I, I don't know the the chemicals and everything in particular. Um, that would be a great question for Coker, though. Um, I do know all the U.S. made stuff, or the U.S. companies that sell tires. Um, they're all going back to the same factory in Vietnam for the 30 by 3 and a halfs. Um, Blockley's are made in Vietnam, too. I just don't know if they're actually made in the same factory or not. Um, so you for the current selection, you don't really get that much of a choice in different rubber compounds. Um, white tires have been tough too. Uh, it seems like every batch of white rubber, the, the rubber can change slightly. Uh, and you don't really know if it's a good batch or not until about three or four hours, or three or four years after they're made also. But by then they're already on to another batch. Um, I know Lucas Tire just gave up on white altogether, so you can't get any of the Ward's Riversides anymore. So it's mainly just the Coker offerings, and, and Universal Tire is owned by Coker. Uh, just in the last year, uh, Universal's warehouse was closed up, and they moved everything down to Coker. And certainly, thank you, Steve, for, for uh, giving us some insight into what, what you do and how you decide. And also, thank you very much for the gift cards that uh, everybody should have received when you came in. How about a round of applause for Steve? Like Aby's Irish Rose, Henry's maiden lady, Aunt Lizzie. The Chevrolet said with regret, to the whippet, we're both wet. Henry's maiden lady, Aunt Lizzie.